I have had several people on my YouTube channel ask me why I still do this. So today I'm going to show you how I solve that problem. What you just saw was the latest modification on my Toyota Tacoma, the hood, quick lift plus kit from Tacoma Beast, which comes with redline tuning gas springs to help you easily lift this super heavy hood on the third generation Tacoma. So I was actually putting off this install or this modification for a while because I was fine with using the rod for the longest time. But after installing my Fox lift kit, it did start to become harder to lift the hood even though my truck was only about two inches higher than what it previously was. I will say I'm only 5'5", so I'm pretty short to start out with, which is probably the root cause of this main issue I'm talking about. But anyways, these hood struts help me tremendously. Before getting gas hood struts, I did do a lot of research. There are a lot of options out there. And as you'll see, when I'm installing these in this video today, I did have to drill in my hood. So there is sort of a permanent aspect to doing a modification like this. So along with giving you guys a good idea of what it takes to install hood struts like these on your third generation Tacoma, I'll be talking about why I specifically went with the redline tuning hood struts. And I'll also talk about why I personally do not recommend no drill hood struts if you are going to do a mod like this. So these hood struts are from TacomaBeast.com and I was actually able to meet Tacoma Beast themselves, funny enough, late last year while I was in the desert while they were filming a really fun video before the Baja 1000 and I was able to get a discount code for you guys for use on their website. So if you guys want a discount on these hood struts, you can use my code right here. And speaking of Tacoma Beast, they also have a YouTube channel with lots and lots of Tacoma Beast content. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of them, but if you haven't, definitely go check out their channel. Plus, it is their 10 year anniversary, which is really, really awesome. So be sure to comment on one of their videos telling them congrats. Now, back to the hood struts, I have the Quick Lift Plus version, which basically raises the hood to the level you see behind me, which is pretty much the same level as what the rod held the hood up at. But you can also get the Max Lift Plus Edition, which will hold your hood seven inches higher than where the rod held it at. I'll have both of them linked down below in case you guys are interested in picking up a set. Again, I'm just going to be talking about the Quick Lift Plus right now and not the Max in this video. But if you're interested in either, my discount code on TacomaBeast.com should work for either of them. Okay, so why hood struts in the first place? Now I'll have to admit, when I very first got my Tacoma back in 2019, I saw a lot of people install hood struts and I didn't really understand why I thought the rod was good enough. But as I mentioned before, it really wasn't until I installed my Fox lift kit and my truck raised a little bit. And just after installing a bunch of accessories under the hood, washing my engine bay, the third generation Tacoma hood is really heavy and my lift did not help with that. While I still think it's true, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, I could still use the rod and everything would be perfectly fine. I will say that after having these hood struts installed for a couple weeks, my life has been so, so much easier and I don't want to go back. It's sort of like having one of those things that you don't realize is really nice until you don't have it. Basically what I'm trying to say is that I was sort of skeptical at first about how useful this was going to be and now I find it super super useful. And it's not just the fact that they help lift the heavy hood, it's also the fact that now the rod isn't in my way anymore. Anytime I was doing work underneath the hood before I was using these hood struts, the airbox is a really good place to put tools. I don't know if anyone else did that but I definitely utilized my upper air box for just resting my tools down while I was installing something. And where the rod location is, it's literally right in front of the air box. Again, this wasn't something that was a huge inconvenience, but now with the rod not in the way, 
accessing anything in my hood is much, much easier. And I will mention that the last reason I decided to install hood struts was because of the sheer amount of comments that you guys made on all my modification videos where I didn't have them. So here they finally are, and you guys are totally right. I love them. When you first research hood struts like I did when I was researching these hood struts, one of the first things that you'll encounter is that there are no drill ones, which sound really tempting at first because it's obviously less work than drilling into your truck. Plus with the no drill ones, you can always go back to whatever your original setup was, so to speak, without having anything permanent be done to your truck. I'll be the first to admit that I don't like rivets and if you want to be entertained and see me struggle with a rivet gun closer to the end of this video definitely keep watching but I also do not like drilling holes in my hood if I don't have to. So the no drill one sounds perfect for someone like me but after taking a closer look I decided that I did not want to go with no drill ones. The problem I see with no drill ones is that while they take advantage of the factory bracket look location, there is a lot of load introduced on the factory hinges of the hood and they're mounted in a way where the load is actually reversed. Now this is just my personal preference and I'm not knocking no drill ones because I see a lot of people that really like them and I do want to mention I haven't heard any major horror stories of people that use no drill hood struts. I have heard about hood alignment issues with them but nothing major. But just overall I'm not a fan of that design. Which is why the redline tuning ones are just better engineered in my opinion. Yes drilling sucks and has its disadvantages but I personally think it is the right way to do these gas hood struts. Okay, so now with all that in mind, and now that you guys know why I specifically went with the hood struts I went with, let me show you guys everything that comes if you get this Redline tuning kit from Tacoma Beast. So before we get started, while this is a really easy install, there are a couple of extra things that you'll need, but I want to explain to you what those are versus what you get in the kit. So with this Quick Lift Plus kit, you're going to get your gas struts. You're also going to get eight multi-grip rivets and then brackets for your fender and brackets for your hood. Now, optionally on the Tacoma Beast website, you can also specify if you need a rivet gun or not and get that as well. The other tools that I'm gonna be using from my garage is a power drill with a 3 16 inch drill bit. I have a tape measure, a center punch. I also have some touch up paint since we are drilling into the hood and I have some blue tape and a marker so we can measure and mark. So Tacoma Beast has a really great cut to the point install video of how to install these. So rather than repeating all of that information in this video, I would rather just give you guys some tips and basically just some information I wish I knew before I installed these hood struts. So if you decide to get these hood struts and you're actually looking how to install these, I'll have Tacoma Beast's install video linked down below as well. You get the paper instructions, but the Tacoma Beast video did really help me out as I was installing my own. So overall the install is pretty easy. I would set aside at least 30 minutes to an hour to complete this whole thing. The gist of this whole install is just measuring and marking where you're gonna drill. But speaking of drilling, this is the part most nerve-wracking for me, the part I wasn't really looking forward to because when you're drilling you're going to have to drill up into the hood and you're gonna wanna have a really good control of your drill because if you go too hard, and I've actually had friends do this install and they've gone too hard, you might drill to the top of your hood and cause kind of a dimple. So you definitely wanna avoid that. I took my time, I went really, really slow on this. I didn't go fast at all. I tried to barely apply pressure. That seemed to be the main thing that definitely helped me. I also used a lot of blue masking tape to kind of make my own drill stop. If I'm being honest, I don't think this actually made a difference and it more so made me just like feel better if I'm being honest But just know overall what I'm saying is to take caution use a drill stop if you need because it's easier than you think to go too far And I personally like I said know people that have done that other than that The only real issue I had with installation was really using my rivet gun now on the Tacoma Beast website You have an option when you purchase these hood struts to add a rivet gun on 
That's what I did because I didn't have a rivet gun, but just keep in mind, this rivet gun that you'll get takes a lot of force to use. Honestly, most of my time spent on this install was just solely on applying these rivets. I don't think I have great grip strength to begin with, so this was a really, really difficult part of the install for me. Especially when you're going up against the hood for those four rivets because it's two rivets per bracket. I'm not tall, which again, does not help me for this application. And unlike the bottom bracket, you don't get to use downward force to help you use the rivet gun. So this was probably more of a me problem, but I wanted to mention it because it was pretty difficult. I would say that if you're only gonna use a rivet gun solely for this application, you don't foresee yourself using one in the future, get the add-on from Tacoma Beast. It definitely works, just know you're gonna have to put a little extra hard work in. However, I don't think it's a bad idea to invest in an electric rivet gun. It definitely would have sped up my process by a huge factor. If you don't like rivets, I've also heard that people have done this install using sheet metal screws instead of rivets. That's probably easier, but the kit already comes with the amount of rivets you need, plus an extra one. And I just wanted to follow the instructions as the product was designed. Anyways, as long as you measure correctly and carefully, and of course you also point those balls on the brackets in the right direction, this install should go pretty smooth and it's pretty easy overall. Besides me being scared to drill those holes in the hood which by the way I forgot to mention you should also paint those holes to prevent rust and also me having a little bit of trouble using the provided rivet gun this install overall went pretty smoothly and the end result is just awesome thanks for making it to the end of this video I hope it helped if you're trying to decide whether to get hood struts or not for your Toyota Tacoma, I highly recommend them now that I have them. Again, I want to thank Tacoma Beast for providing a discount code for my awesome viewers. You can use my code to get 5% off any product on the Tacoma Beast website. Thanks so much. If you want to connect more with me, you can follow me on my Instagram. It is at Chloe Kuo Taco. I post more in real time on there. But other than that, thanks again for watching and I hope I'll see it in the next video. Bye guys.